So, I've been thinking about some of the changes going on in Marvel right now. And I think that with this whole thing with, I think the new editor-in-chief, C.V. Sobolski, we're going to get some new things coming out, probably spring. We're already starting to see a lot of the changes going on with editorial, Tom Brevoort. A lot of these uh, other guys are kind of leaving books or getting kicked off books. Books are getting canceled. But seeing some other stories that are going on, such as one I'm really enjoying right now, Cable. I think it's Ed Brisson and John Mallon. And really had a good time with the comic right now. Unfortunately, though, Cable's one of those comics that just seems to get new teams, new writers come on every five issues. So... One story arc's done. I'd love to see what this new team's going to do on the next next run. Oops, guess what? New team comes on. Kind of just ignore what's been recently been done previously. And it's a little disappointing. But I was just looking at just the art in the current run. And it's pretty solid. It's got this kind of rough, sketchy art feel to it. It's really 90s. I think that's probably one of the things I really enjoy about it. And even John Mallon, the guy on Twitter, is really cool. Um, he's always talking about new new runs that he's doing or new, new art that he's doing. He hasn't mentioned a new run. I think he said he's thinking about doing something, some independent comic company. Bounce around some ideas, but nothing's really happened. And he stated that I think issue 154 is, is going to be it. That's going to be the last thing, which is... Which is disappointing, I gotta say. I really wanted to see more of what him and Brisson were gonna do. Because the way this story's going on, it, it, it's introducing characters that have been from the previous X-Force comics. Which if you have read like the 90s run with, I think, what's his name? Fabian Nicieza. Um, you've got Greg Capullo was on there. Rob Liefeld was on there, I think for the first 15 issues then you had I think uh, when Strife came on it was that huge crossover event so it, it it was good it was it was really fun for the first 40 issues until Cannonball left the team I think that was like 96 97 but just to read this this comic it feels like an X-Force comic from the 90s without being an X-Force comic you've got Shatterstar in there you've got um, you've got, what's it, Longshot, I think is his name, Deadshot, no, I think it's Longshot, I forget, I need to crack open that comic again and check it out, but he's in there, and he's, he was from the X-Men run from the, the 80s, when, back when Chris Claremont was on there, you've got X-23 before she's become Wolverine in the current run, and a couple other characters, I think even Armor from Astonishing X-Men, so you've got some really neat things in there. It's, it's new, but it's got a little bit of the nostalgia, and it kind of mixes it together, and it is, it's just a fun story with a lot of action in there, and there's no, no agendas, no, no, hey, check this out, we're going to talk about this, this person here, take this time to push our opinions on certain political things. No, it's just a well-written comic that's fun for what it is, you get this story, and what you see is what you get. And I think that's one of those comics. That it kind of has a Red Hood and the Outlaws vibe where it's just a lot of action. Um, the story serves its purpose, but it's not, it doesn't detract from the art. It's everything kind of fits together. It's like a, a fun B movie, like fun B action movie. So th those are just some of my thoughts about the comic. Um, hopefully more people can give it, give it a try or even if, it wraps up. Maybe some people will go and pick it up in a trade. All right.